Okay, I'll call the town board meeting of the town of Lake Mills to order on this March 10th at 8 p.m. Notice was published in the Lake Mills Leader on March 4th and posted at the town hall, the North End Boat Launch, and the call to sack on Finch Brothers Road. Actually, it was not published in the Lake Mills Leader, but I did submit it on time and they did not put it in. All right, and it is also always available on the town of Lake Mills website and anyone who is concerned could find it there. I would ask for a motion to adopt the agenda as published. I'll make that motion. Second. Is there any discussion on the agenda? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And all opposed, the same sign. Motion is approved. <clears throat> the approval of the minutes. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of the February 10th uh, Town of Lake Mills board meeting as published. I'll uh, second it. Is there any discussion? Um, I did have one question. Um, under old business number nine, there is an item C, and I could, could you just explain? I, uh, I, I was just um, following along with the agenda. It was um, London Road. The, the B was the re raising revenue for highway construction and C was London Road specs and we ended up doing them both together. Now I understand where, how you did it. Should I um, clarify yeah. that then? Um, <coughs> if everybody else is fine with it, it just, it, it's not clear what sure. was item C. Um, so I think that we should probably amend it okay. to add something that this was for London Road. All right, making that clarification, I would ask for a motion to approve the minutes as amended. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the minutes from the February 10th meeting, please say aye. Uh, aye, and those opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. <clears throat> Item number four, the approval of the treasurer's report. I'll make a motion to approve March's treasurer's report. Second. Is there any discussion? Dave, we're counting on you. I did have one little thing, but I figured it out. I'm good. <laughs> All in favor of approving the treasurer's report for March, please say aye. 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 And all opposed, same sign. Thank you very much. Motion is approved. Approval of the general funding vouching. I'll make a motion that we approve general fund vouching in the amount of $1,281,816.50. I'll second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the general funding vouching, please say aye. 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 And all opposed, the same sign. General funding for the month of March is approved. Thank you, Sharon, for all your hard work. Okay, I just want to tell you for you today on the delinquent personal property. All right. Um, Kroger Oasis has not paid yet. DNL Investor Investment has not paid yet. The finish line construction paid four hundred and fifty dollars, but they still owe three hundred and forty-four oh six plus interest. Mm -hmm. The other two owe interest also. Say again, the fit amount that finish line paid. They paid four hundred and fifty dollars, and their balance is uh, three fifty-eight eighty-eight with interest. All right. And do you want what the balance of the others are with interest or not? Sure, why not? Okay, Kroglville Oasis owes one sixty-nine thirty. DNL Investment owes one thousand seven hundred fifty dollars and thirty-five cents. All right. Plus a reminder to everybody: your dog licenses are due by March thirty-first. Or there's a going to be a thirty dollar late fee total for each dog. <coughs> okay, you'll keep us posted on that. Thank you, Sharon, for your hard work on that. Item number six is the uh, our reports. Um, item A is the police report. Matt. Uh, for February, we had twenty nine and a quarter hours of road patrol. Nine and a quarter hours of radar, the officers handled three complaints, issued five citations, four traffic warnings, and assisted the DNR during the Knickerbocker reference dispute between two fishermen. So kind of a slow month for us. Um, 
the squad car did have to go in for some repairs. I don't know if you guys saw that or yet. I did, or not. yeah. Okay. Um, went in for a general oil change. You found that the fuel tank was leaking. It was oh. a crack in the seal, mm -hmm. and it had some engine coolant uh, lines were leaking too uh, for seven hundred eighty-three dollars and sixty-one cents, which is over what I budgeted for the year, uh, but not by much. But it did go over um, necessary repair. Otherwise, it would have been down at the time. So absolutely. Um, just to bring that to your attention. Also, um, our officers did attend uh, free training on March 6th at the Lake Mill City Police Department. And all of our officers are trained in Narcan uh, training, which is the drug issue that can be administered, especially for heroin overdoses, mm. uh, to save the people who have overdosed on heroin. Um, so all the officers are certified in that. We have a couple guys going for some more free training. Uh, Madden, Schmidt, and Felder will be going up to Dodge County for a radar certification which is again a free school that's offered uh, actually up by Dodge County Sheriff's Department. So uh, the only other thing I brought up is this ordinance that's currently on the books. Let me pass that down there just for something for the board to consider. I know one of the questions that are gonna be coming up at the uh, Rock Lake uh, Committee is gonna be this regulation of no person shall operate or occupy a motor vehicle upon the ice of Rock Lake between 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. I know it's going to be a question that should be an ordinance maybe the town should take a look at. I did go out several nights uh, during the ice fishing and did not see any excessive or unsafe operation of motor vehicles on the ice at night. Matter of fact, very few vehicles have been out there. I'm not sure when this was enacted. If there was an issue, I'm sure at one time with that, but this may come into a problem next year during the ice if somebody files a complaint to this ordinance, so that I'd have to enforce it because it's obviously been passed by the town board. Mm -hmm. So, um, just something to consider. I know we got some time now because the ice, I don't think, will be on much longer. Um, I don't know if we could modify that to maybe no reckless operation on the ice or excessive noise from motor vehicles on the ice. So that's something that would be considered as a difference. But I just bring it up because I know it's going to be a question coming up on that meeting April 7th. Thank you, Matt. Yep, that's all I have. I also talked to Officer Scott Irwin, who went to the DNR for the boat audit this year, and he said they got thumbs up. They were a little curious about the um, drop in activity, but he was able to explain that, and we should have our uh, report shortly. What do you mean, drop in activity? Number of tickets issued, or? Yeah. Yeah, right. We seem to have fixed that. They noticed, but. They did notice they did in the notice. audit. Yeah. I am looking forward to spring of 2015. Um, before we start the next report, I think that um, Joint Rock Lake Committee will be meeting in April. Yeah. And um, Stan is here. He's going to give us an update. But um, all of the officers, the new officers that we have and the new warden have been invited to your April 6th meeting. <laughs> April 7th because of the election? No, it's April 7th this is the Tuesday. Okay, so Tuesday, April 7th. Everyone has been invited and also Sarah has sent out to your committee stand copies of this chapter five and also the swim platform ordinance that you were looking at and we will be looking at those ideas, looking for your recommendations. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. On to item B, which is the Joint Rock Lake Committee report. Mr. Stan Spineski is here in the audience, and he will give us his report. <coughs> Thank you for that introduction. <coughs> and we're looking forward to next month's meeting when um, you folks uh, join us and have a good discussion about some of this stuff what you need to keep doing a good job on the lake, especially. Um, so I'm, my name's Stan Smanieski. I live in the township. I'm, in, I'm on the Joint Rock Lake Committee. I'm here to give you the annual report. It's mostly from last year of activity. <coughs> I'm sorry we're a little late this year. It is March. Um, Joint Rock Lake Committee consists of five members, three from the town, two from the city. Our role is to advise that you want a cough drop? I got one. 
<laughs> Our role is to advise the town and city on issues related to the lake. Currently, we have Larry Clark, Wes Dawson, and myself from the town. And then we have Glenn Zastro from the city. <coughs> and now we have one opening on the city. We do meet the first Tuesday of the month at 6.30 in City Hall. Our, our minutes are on the website and our meetings are open to the public. <coughs> so uh, first, uh, last year or even earlier, I'm sorry, Patricia Cicero from Land and Water Co County Conservation <coughs> and Jeannie Scher of the Rock Lake Improvement Association brought to our attention the ability for our municipalities to get a Clean Boats, Clean Waters grant. Rock Lake has more invasive species than Lake Ripley <coughs> or than Lake Mendota. Uh, so we supported and encouraged the town and city to apply for the grant. In the first year, the town did apply, received the grant. We had excellent outcomes. <coughs> In terms of contact time and education, the two part-time employees had with the boaters that were launching on Rock Lake. Our understanding is that you've applied for the 2015 season, and the city has also. We want to thank you for applying, pursuing, and administering those grants. Do you know if you've gotten the 2015 one yet? That's great news. City zoning ordinance. Uh, Joint Rock Lake wrote letters and testified at the City Plan Commission uh, as the draft ordinance moved through the city. We supported the changes to the shoreline zoning rules because we found them vague and relatively ineffective for good shoreline protection. Our concerns centered around a 35-foot setback instead of the current 20-foot setback. Um, we advocated adding language, specific language about erosion control measures, and we supported clarifying language regarding a vision and access corridor for all the shoreline areas. As you know, the town has more stringent regulation, and we couldn't get it up to that level, but we do, we have had some progress, and we're pretty happy with that. And that's passed, as far as I know. Um, also last year, another update on the city and the parks department in terms of roadway s snow removal. They did pilot the salt brine. It's less harmful, less expensive uh, to the lake and the water. They ran their pilot project and this year supposedly, I don't know the facts and details, but they have uh, supposedly expanded that project and are working closer with Jefferson County to expand the use of brine on the roads. A uh, canoe kayak storage rack. Um, we initiated and researched that project and want to thank you for get, uh, getting it funded and built and placed. We now have a rack at Ferry Park and the city installed one at Sandy Beach. Um, lake level changes. In response to comments we peri periodically receive about the winter drawdown, People complained that it happens too early and too fast. We worked with Patricia Cicero, again from Land, the County Land and Water Conservation Office, who talked with the DNR and the city. We now, after that discussion, we have the understanding that they do not have to lower the lake the first day of the drawdown. They can take two weeks, make it more gradual. We spend more time notifying the public, putting notices in the papers so people can get their boats off in time. And we're hoping we're going to get less complaints about that. Uh, more recently, we supported and were involved in the city public meetings about the dam replacement. That looks like it's moving forward in a good way. Uh, we're thinking we're going to get a new automated dam out of the deal. And um, we're also reviewing the Rock Lake management plan so we can engage on uh, important issues related to the lake and community in a better way in the watershed. That's all I have for the report. I want to thank you for your work, for supporting us, and want to keep good communication with you. Um, if you have any questions, and again, we'll see you next month at the meeting about other stuff. 
So, Stan, you talked about the uh, dam. Um, actually, I have a copy of um, the current proposal, um, and uh, Patricia Cicero, again, um, got this uh, for us, and I'm going to leave that here um, so that if uh, town residents would like to review that, um, they can see what is proposed and what I believe the city is moving forward with. Right. Um, at, at this point, so. Uh, Jim, is that available online for people to look at, or is um, it the I, I believe or? I believe it is. Um, I believe that you need to go to the um, City of Lake Mills site and drill down in there a little bit. I do not know exactly where. I don't know, and that's why I didn't want to talk about it too much. But it right. looks like it's moving in the right direction, and right. we'll see what they pass. Actually, is it possible, Sarah, for you to post some and of that on the town's sure, website? Um, what we can do is Patricia did have access to this, so if people are interested in getting a copy of this electronically, um, we could um, ask Patricia to get us um, a copy, and we could probably post it on our website. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she had sent me an early draft, but I haven't seen anything mm -hmm. since then, so I'm sure she One, could get me, yeah. Right. Yeah. One thing we do have to be careful of is this is, um, to the best of my knowledge, a proposal right now. Okay. It seems to be moving forward with this direction and everything, but there could be changes along the way, and so we would just need to make sure that we keep, keep track of that. <coughs> So good luck this year and let us know what you need. You guys will be going forward. There are um, several people on your committee who are up for reappointment in April. Um, you, Mr. Smineski, are one of them, and so is Larry Clark. No, oh, actually, Wes Dawson is up, 415, and so are you, Stan. And so you'll be getting a call from me about that. Um, I'm looking forward to that April meeting where we're going to introduce our new lake officers and um, our new warden, Pearl, will be introduced and um, we'll go forward from there. One of the things I think is really positive that Matt has pulled together in the last few months is all of our lake patrol officers will be availing a training session in May at Green Lake where they'll be going for three or four days of training, right, Matt? Uh, uh, five days total, actually. On um, water patrol. Great. Right, it's through the DNR. It's a free school the DNR puts on, and uh, it's on basic uh, water enforcement and patrol for some of our newer people. And uh, next on our agenda down here a little further is Clean Boats, Clean Waters. Um, we're moving forward on the Clean Boats, Clean Waters personnel for this year, and so... Things are in good shape, I think. It's a good program. Appreciate all the help that you guys have given us and all the education that you avail yourselves of. I'm hoping that you'll be doing that this spring, availing yourself of some more education and working forward. Um, if you have any power over the other guy, be nice if you guys would continue your service to the town of Lake Mills on the Joint Rock Lake Committee. And if others are interested, they should step forward. Certainly. And and engage you folks at least. Thanks, right. Dan. Thank you. We appreciate it. All right, item C, the Planning Commission report. Jim. Okay, we um, we actually did meet um, this uh, <laughs> this <laughs> previous week, uh, and um, we uh, actually have that item up for discussion uh, tonight. All right. Thank you. Item D, any other committee reports? Working on clean boats, clean waters. CBCW is clean boats, clean waters, and election. So, Sarah, why don't you? Uh, uh, clean boats, clean waters. We have a um, uh, timeline in place. Patricia, you and Patricia, right? Put that right. together. <clears throat> so, I'm in the process of getting the help wanted ads in the newspapers. Um, have you heard anything on the city's? whether they actually did send in their application or not? I have not, and of course we'll need to follow up yeah, with them to see. we may be doing it solo again this year, we'll see. Might have hit a glitch on that. Mm, not sure if they have received the grant, have not received um, any word from the city about their grant, 
and or the financing which they said they would turn over to us to administer so we are seeking just for the public's information we are seeking three people to fill the clean boats clean waters jobs I think I two actually um, we have one oh, right, returning right, right, right. we have one returning hopefully one returning gentlemen and um, we'll be looking for a couple other people to fill those hours on Rock Lake ads will be going out soon and we thought we would be doing those um, interviews for those people in the early part of April so that we are set to go when the ice goes off the lake and the fishermen return the first of May so um, any other questions on the committee reports um, the Cambridge uh, Fire and EMS Commission met on the 26th, uh, met our new um, fire chief, Terry Johnson, 20-year vet. He's also a uh, pharmacist, so it looks like he's going to be a, a good fit, fit, I think, with his, you know, detail and all that a, a um, pharmacist has to have, so it should work good. Uh, the other thing is uh, we're on track with the the two uh, new EM, or the ambulances, and Bob he's here to elaborate a little bit. He, he bought the cots. He got a deal for three year, no interest on the uh, cots, so they are in service right now. So, other than that, um, I guess Bob, if you have anything you want to add to the meeting, it was pretty much kind of housekeeping and uneventful. So, sure. So I, I came to give you a report on the EMS. I'll make it brief. Bob, so, Bob, could you step up to the microphone? I sure, sure, thanks. Mr. Uh, Bob Saloff, EMT extraordinaire, Cambridge Fire District. And our director. Thank you very much. So I just want to report to you that, as um, was reported, the two new squads will be delivered in June. Uh, they're not brand new. They're five years old. We're buying them from Wanakee. They'll be matching squads. We got an extremely good deal. Uh, for us, they're, brand, they're new because we're running with a 17-year-old and 11-year-old um, rigs, so it's going to be really uh, fine. We are buying them with uh, the Stryker um, power load systems, so these are actually arms that come out with the cot, and then we can lower the cots down. Of course, we had to buy new cots. These are very expensive items, but we, uh, we put in some, some grant applications, and we've uh, been saving money to get this, so in June, uh, we'll be transitioning to those new squads. We also, um, just for your information, they're 2010 E450 6.0 liter diesel rigs. And we bought them for $60,000 each as compared to the new ones which are around 210, 220. So we're saving a, a considerable amount of money. And um, we just shouldn't let our squads, although they're in perfect condition, we shouldn't let them go so long. And uh, I'm gonna do my best to do a five year cycle if we can possibly do it. Um, just to let you know that we're 17 advanced EMTs, 7 EMTs, 9 drivers, 5 trainees, 1 MD, and 1 chaplain make up our squad. We've been in, 100, we've been in service for 100% of the time for 37 months. So we're, do, we're doing well, uh, notwithstanding that it's still a struggle to recruit and get enough people, but we're doing well with it. Um, our facility, um, we in installed motion detectors in our, in, our, in our building so that when we come stumbling in at 2, 3 in the morning, we don't trip over the garbage pails, but the lights go on, which is great. We also are installing a keyless entry system for security so that we can get in and out and we can uh, control who has access to our building. We have not had that in the past. And uh, we've also put a in-house paging system so that we can hear the pages. I don't know how... Um, you know, paging is difficult inside of brick buildings uh, like, um, you know, like schools and public service buildings and so forth. So we have an in-house paging system which makes you jump out of your seat literally, which is fine, which is what we do. Um, just to let you know, we, our transports have been mostly to uh, St. Mary's Hospital was 28%, Ford Healthcare 23%, UW's 22%, Stoughton 8 Meritor 8 Mercy and Janesville 3%, VA Hospital, 2%, and then we've gone to Watertown, Edgerton, and St. Luke's uh, Medical Center in Milwaukee. We've picked up 30% uh, of our calls have been in the town of Oakland, 30% in the village of Cambridge, 25% in, in Christiana, 5% in Rockdale, 5% in Deerfield, and 3% in the town of Lake Mills. We also pick up in Albion, Cottage Grove, Edgerton, Fort Atkinson, Madison, Marshall, Stoughton. Uh, most of the calls 
come between noon and three, four o'clock in the afternoon on Tuesdays. Um, I don't have a clue <laughs> why, but you know, our numbers are not so great that, that you can really draw much conclusion from that. You know, we don't, we did uh, 440 calls in 2014, we did 367 calls in, four, in 2013. Our numbers are going up, we're, if you will, we're dependable. Any questions? <coughs> I do have, if you're at, ever interested in all the detail, which is lots, on the data, we're keeping good track of our reports now. We've gone all of 14 with really making sure that everything is logged correctly. So we've got good data. You're welcome to come and see exactly what kinds of calls we have, uh, you know, whether they're cardiac or they're breathing or whatever. Um, <coughs> to that information. And you're also uh, invited to come and visit me at the station. I'm there from 6 to 6 most every day. You can come and knock on the door and I'll give you a tour and you can <coughs> see our operation. Appreciate your help, Bob. Yep. Bob, you did mention, yes, um, you said in 2014 you had uh, 448 440. 440 calls. Yep. And then in 2013? Three, oh, let me get the exact number. I'm just, just close. Three, <coughs> 367. <coughs> and so far to date in 2015, we have 93 calls. Mm -hmm. And, you know, part of that, um, it's not that we're growing. Uh, part of it is we're keeping records of every time there's a page so that we can go back and see what we did or what we didn't do. So if there's a fire, a standby or an alarm, we're logging it. And we're writing a little narrative about what happened. You know, <coughs> didn't roll out, they canceled us, or got to the scene and it was a false alarm. But uh, that way, you know, in two years from now when somebody calls me and says, what happened that day, I can go back and look. So, so part of that number increase is just we're keeping good records. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Anything Thank you. Else? Super. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you for your service, Bob, and thank you, Dave, for being our representative there. I was looking on the list here, and um, your term is not expired. I know. <laughs> great. We have to die there, but because Bob is there at the meeting, that doesn't happen either. So you don't get to die here forever. <laughs> Appreciate your service, co Thanks. helping us cover the town of Lake Mills, keeping everyone safe. I'm Thank you. Some time, you know, and, and I'll show you around. Okay. Thanks for having Yep, there you go. Thanks. Thank you. Yep. Item number seven is a period of public comment and questions for anything that is not on the agenda. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak to the town board? I would like to just uh, bring something forward. Um, this was actually brought uh, forward um, by one of the members of the Plan Commission, um, and uh, it's purely informational. Um, Pipeline 61 Education Forum, um, uh, sponsored by the Wisconsin Tar Sands Action Coalition and the Wisconsin Safe Energy Alliance. Um, this is going to be Thursday, March 19th, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at the Lake Mills City Hall. Um, this is all revolving around um, information and getting more understanding of um, what um, Enbridge, I think I'm saying that correct, yes. um, uh, the folks that um, own and operate the pipelines that run through part of our township. Um, and. Uh, you know, people may have heard that they're, uh, they're talking about upping the amount of tar sands, the pressure, the volume, um, and so this, this meeting is to discuss all of those types of things. So I just wanted to bring it to the public's attention. Which, to, to add to that, which would be a very good meeting to attend, especially for the, the folks that have the pipeline going through their property. I think, Phil, you guys have some property yep. goes through. Um, <clears throat> and I don't know if you've been following this thing or not, but what they want to do is they want to um, up the pressure in line 61 because they want to uh, quadruple the number of gallons pumped through that line. And I believe right now they're running 800,000, no, 450,000, and they want to bring it up to like 1.2 million barrels per day. 
And there's also some talk, because you probably got all the letters also too, where they came through and it was not a project, but they did a 300 foot assessment to the west side of line 61 um, with the archeological environmental impact, figuring that someday they're going to come in and put in line 66. It's not a project, but they already have a label. So the biggest thing was uh, due to their history, of what's uh, been happening with Enbridge. Their safety record is really good, but they've had the Kalamazoo, Michigan leak. They've had the uh, uh, Adams County leak, and I believe there's one down in Illinois. And they're putting a, a, a uh, they have to put in four pump stations to increase this pressure. And one of them is in the town of Medina. When this came, meeting came to Jefferson last summer, uh, it really was, uh, we kind of, I don't want to mean swept under the rug, but Downplay. there really wasn't a lot, yeah. Downplay. Dane County has really been holding these guys to yep. the letter of the law because they have uh, 700,000, no, seven, yeah, 700,000, 770,000 million dollars worth of uh, insurance coverage, and Dane County wants that uh, increased. Um, by maybe five or six uh, million dollars. And obviously they have a lot of underwriters to, for insurance companies. They are a very strong company, but Dane County's position they're taking is, what happens if they have uh, a couple more Kalamazoo, Michigan uh, leaks, and then all of a sudden Enbridge's, uh, the pile of cash is diminished and then that company gets passed on to another owner, then we could be left holding the bag with an environmental impact. So anybody that's involved or interested in this, this would really be a very good meeting to go to because I think Dane County is starting to set the bar and I think the rest of the counties um, need to um, kind of follow suit. Uh, we have a lot of experience with this because we have 40, or. We have 17 40 acre properties that this uh, pipeline goes through and we've definitely had issues with these folks. They generally are always really good about taking care of things, um, but they're, uh, they're here to stay and obviously we, we need oil and um, we need to keep up to what's really actually going on with those folks. So I'm sure your daddy's probably been getting all the letters also. So. Thank you, Dave. When's that meeting again? Thursday, March 19th, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at Lake Mills City Hall. Okay, thanks, Jim. Okay, okay the I municipal don't... building downtown, not the town of Lake Mills City Hall, not here, downtown Lake Mills. Okay. On a lighter note, RLIA's having a talk on uh, fisheries by a DNR, um, I don't know her, uh, if she's a biologist. Fisheries biologist. Fisheries Laura Bio Thompson. Everybody knows that. Laura Stromick Thompson on March 30th, 7 o'clock at Tyranina Brewery. So, can't beat that. Fish and chips. Fish and beer. Fish and beer. <laughs> <laughs> Look out. <laughs> Thank you, Fran. going to be Anybody some tall else? tales there. Yes, right. <laughs> Take a public comment. Hearing none, we'll move on to item 8, uh, application reviews. Item A is the discussion and decision on a request a to hold a special event by Lighthouse Events, formerly GLM, for the 24-8 hour marathon on August 14, 2015. He is available by phone. Uh, Daniel right. Cordick is ready. All right, you guys have the paperwork in front of you. This is, I believe, the fifth time that the... Uh, yep. 24-hour marathon has been here in Lake Mills. They coordinate with the city and with the town on this event. It starts at Sandy Beach and runs all night long. I will make a motion that we approve the 24-hour marathon um, uh, for um, August 14th um, and 15th, uh, starting at 7 p.m. or excuse me, 7 a.m. and uh, finishing up at 7 a.m. How second it? Is there any discussion? The only real question I have in this whole thing here is 
um, the two-way traffic thing. I don't know, and I'd be kind of curious to uh, how many riders they have. And I do realize when it went past our house a couple years ago, they were far and few in between and they were watched and monitored pretty closely. And, and the run, I guess, isn't quite as bad as, as Crystal Pikes. You know, I, I suppose they'd have their lights at night, but um, I guess I'm kind of curious to the volume of, of riders at one time. I thought that they had said that this was a situation where there were um, teams and individuals, but um, I thought on their previous one that they had um, given us some numbers, so that would be... Well, they had 90, per yeah, 90 participants here and 10 people for support staff. Hi, Daniel. It's Sarah at the town of Lake Mills. I'm good. We have a question for you. I'm going to put you on speakerphone, okay? <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I was just curious of the the volume of riders that you have after dark because you have two-way traffic on um, the Hope Lake Road, uh, Highway G, Mud Lake Road, and back into the Lakeside Lutheran High School. Hang on, hang on. So do you have it turned all the way up and do you have it on speaker? Yeah, I do. Are you there, Daniel? Yeah. Okay, okay. that's a little better. Okay, go ahead. Um, the volume of riders at night would probably be about 12 at a time. Okay. They're all, they're all required to have lights on. Okay. And they're very visible. Okay. So then if you had 12 at it, they're going both ways, correct? At the same time? Yes. Okay. But they are not all grouped together, or are they? That's not necessarily. Okay, so, going at their own pace. so depending on when they come out of the water, say, um, they might be, there might be 12 people out on the road course, but they might be scattered along the whole course. Um, right. Um, during the night, we don't do any swimming, so if we call the top, others are also running at the same time. Okay. okay. And um, you've given us numbers of about 90 participants and everything like that. Um, is, is that still pretty correct number? Yeah, I don't have any other questions. No, thank else. you, Daniel. Um, you do need to look at our ordinance again before you plan again for next year. We do not allow in the town of Lake Mills that uh, two-way traffic, that traffic against traffic. So in the future, when you are designing your course, you may look at that. Okay. All right, we're going to move on to a vote here. Sarah, you? Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Right. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, thank you. Bye. All right. Bye. <clears throat> I would make a motion to approve the special event for Lighthouse, Lighthouse yeah, Events. We already have that already. We already right. right. So we just motion made and seconded. All right. Is there any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the triathlon for August 14th, 2015 for the Lighthouse Events, please say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. And all opposed, same sign. The special event is permit is passed. Uh, item number B, the discussion and decision on a request to hold a special event at Hazel Farms for the dairy breakfast on June 20th, 2015. Yes. Oh, two days. Two days. Two day event. Gene called and scolded me for that one. It's all right. Uh, not the first year for this event. Second year. Um, this is sponsored by the Watertown Agri Business Club, and they are the ones who have applied for the event. Um, is there any? Are there any questions? 
I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the uh, special events permit for um, Hustle Farms, uh, actually the um, dairy breakfast, um, June 20th and 21st, um, starting at 6, ending at 12, and then starting at 7 and ending at 1 p.m. I'll second it. Is there any discussion or any questions? I, Nick, I would assume that um, I, I believe um, Bob was involved with traffic. I would assume that there's something set up. Do you have to do that through the town and the county, or do they have private they, people come in? And, that, would you would you step up to the mic? Thanks. I think they asked that uh, this year we contact the county too okay. and ask for additional traffic, okay. maybe on both sides and maybe. Uh, Grandpa thought closer to the farm than 89 and G and Hope Lake and G, just because the traffic pe picked up a lot of speed. By the time you know the cop was sitting at G and 89, and they picked up. I mean, there were cars going by at 60 miles an hour with with yeah, last people we, crossing the road. Wow. wow! Last year we assigned a patrolman out there for the town. Okay. We had put up, I put up signs uh, that obtained from the county over in special event I had. I obtained a speed board from the city of Lake Mills and put that out there also. Uh, we did assign Good. one patrolman out there. I guess what I would like to do is if we could maybe get a couple JCECs okay. out there, yeah. uh, which would be the Sheriff's Department. And I reserves. think they, I think he contacted him last year, but we didn't contact him They had him an early event enough. going, they couldn't, they couldn't, they were unavailable last year because I tried to get them last year too. Yeah. So I can look into getting a couple JCCs out there with an actual patrolman also again. I plan on having somebody out there okay. for both both dates. That, that is One. a large event. Yeah, so f for people's record or, or for reference, um, three to 4,000 uh, participants mm -hmm. is, is what, and I think Expected. that's kind of where you hit last, last year. Last year was right? 45 or 4,700. Yeah. 45, 47, wow. It's a good event. It's Absolutely. Just a lot of activity and a lot of things moving yeah so the more official help you get i think the better off you are yeah and one correction it's from six it's not from six on saturday it's now seven to seven to one p.m saturday and seven and sunday one. oh okay and sunday okay thank you for that correction yep yep and what i'm understanding i was not there last year I, from what I'm understanding, there is parking across County Highway G. G. Correct. And so they need to cross the street in order to get from the parking yep. area to the farm. Well, maybe we can put some special attention on that, work with the county on that. Um, seems like it would be nice if they wouldn't have to cross County Highway G to park. But yeah. Sure, you're it's, limited by well, how that works out. Crop rotation affects where we can park. Yeah, sure. Maybe it would work out better if you could somehow park on Mud Lake Road or have them cross Mud Lake Road or I don't, well, think about I the don't design know what, of it, you know, as far as safety yeah. is concerned. We'd certainly yeah. like not to have anything serious happen. I'm totally flattered that this happens in the town of Lake Mills. I think it's really a great showcase for you guys and for us, too. It was fun. It was fun. This work. will be our last year for a while, but yeah. <laughs> it'll rotate to another farm. Get a heel. Farm. Yep. Phil, you can step up. <laughs> now we appreciate you coming. Thank you. Tell Grandpa. Work on the design. Okay. <laughs> so there's a motion here. Yes. All yeah. in favor of approving the special event permit for Hazel Farms for the Watertown Agri Breakfast on... Um, June 20th and 21st. Please say aye. 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 All opposed? Same sign. Motion is carried. Thanks for coming. Good luck. I hope it's dry for you. <laughs> Item C. Discussion and decision on a land variance request for Philip and Deanna Batiste. Welcome, Phil. And, and hope, just for a correction, uh, I was corrected at the plan commission it's Dina. Oh, I'm going to be messing that up. <laughs> <laughs> I have some sheets for you, you guys, for more clarification. Absolutely, we thank you. We uh, got the permits emailed to us, the original drawings, um, so you get more information on that. So. 
Thanks, Bill. Okay, why don't you tell us what's proposed, and then uh, Jim can fill us in on what happened at the planning committee. Uh, what we're asking for is a, a variance uh, for the septic and uh, for the road. Uh, the dimensions, we were too close to the road, so we asked for a variance for that. And then also the septic field, um, they wanted it 15 feet from the septic field where we're going to put the pool. And at the last plan commission meeting, um, we didn't quite have all the details because we were, they told us a different number. So we called them up on that Monday or the next the Tuesday and they emailed us our permits from when we built the house for the sanitary, Jeff did. And um, what it showed is that we are actually a good 20 feet away from the septic fields. We, we think it's more by um, the pictures we took when we dug up the septic field when it was originally uh, done. We think it's further than the 29 feet. Um, but according to the drawings, it is, but we're not quite agreeing with them, but we're definitely further away than when we talked at the planning commission meeting. So at the minimum, we're 20 feet away, but we'll probably be further than that. So that would uh, clarify the only problem you had last at the last meeting. Right. But we wanted to make sure we had the diagrams for you guys so that you, and we actually tape measured everything out to re-verify, even though these are the drawings that he sent us, we actually took the next step and re-measured everything again to make sure his drawings were accurate. Great. So, um, Philip and Dina had, had come to the Plan Commission um, wanting purely a, a variance um, from um, setback of center line of the road and property. Um, my concern when I had heard that there was a septic field uh, in relatively close proximity was I, I was focused more on whether or not um, there were issues with or potential issues with the septic field. And so when I called Jefferson County and talked to them, um, what Philip is, is talking about is that basically um, I had gotten information um, about um, setback distances for a pool and for a deck um, and they were not in agreement with what um, uh, the Batists had been told um, previously and so I just didn't want to have them get into this and then all of a sudden have to tear it out because of some ruling that we just didn't understand or didn't get correct information. So this is why he, he brought the uh, diagram and this is excellent. This is perfect, thank you. So what is the concern that if the pool leaked that it would flood the, no, the leach bed it, or what? No, if the pool compacts the soil over, the, the, um, pool, has, the pool has to be uh, 15 feet um, from the trench, from the edge of the trench sure. and um, the deck uh, can be uh, 10 feet, as I understand it. Is, is that what, is yeah, that what you confirmed? They, they reconfirmed it. They talked to Jeff's supervisor, the one you, name you told us to contact. Yes. And, um, they, and with ours, the deck is going to be at 20 feet, so the pool's going to be back even a even little further. further. So we're, we wanted to make sure that we were out of the septic field and everything. Right. You've got no issues. We think that the septic field is even further than that, but yeah. we're going just with what the permit says, mm -hmm. even though we think it's further back. Right. We're going with what this is, and so we're perfectly good with just what the paper says, but we think the field is even further back by another eight feet. So we, but we wanted to make sure when we drew this, we went with what Jeff's permit Yep. stated because he inspected it so there it is so this is this is perfect so the plan commission actually um, um, passed um, this with uh, one contingency uh, basically that um, they um, would comply with um, uh, 
county and um, actually state regulation on septic fields because septic fields are actually regulated by the state, mm -hmm. not, not by Jefferson County. And um, I believe the term that Steve Nass used was pouts, uh, private, yeah, private um, on-site waste treatment, I think is systems, I think is what pouts stands for. Um, and, um, and, and that would be a, kind of a big deal, and this is why I was concerned. And so, so this is great, but Plan Commission passed it with the um, understanding that they would comply, and this, uh, this drawing actually um, covers that very nicely. Sure. Your next biggest issue, then, is just the, the setback from the road, because you're mm -hmm. too close to the corridor. Right. Which I don't, I guess, in my opinion, I don't really see that being much of a problem because it's probably going to be pretty much in the same area where you had your. Um, we had. Lean. Um, it's going to be right by our house. Uh, there's actually going to be trees and there's a swing set there and everything sure. in front of it that's been there since we built the house. Right, yeah. And we had a pool there. We had a takedown pool for four years, but um, through animal destroying it. <laughs> um, we finally decided that we just wanted to put up one that was a little stronger, which required it to be set there permanently because the uh, raccoon would keep uh, destroying the pool every year. So, and also going to be hardware because uh, we didn't want to hit the extension cord again with the lawnmower. So that's why we decided that we we're going to put it underground and that's when we need the that's when they need the variance. If they just take it down every year, it wasn't an issue. And the pool's been there for years, but this one's a permanent one. Sure. Mm -hmm. And you won't really see it because of the trees and everything. Mm -hmm. Yes, what I was thinking too, and then the highway bends the other way, so if anybody right. was gonna run off the road, likelihood they're going off the other side anyway. Right. Correct. Okay, we're all coming over. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that big, but <laughs> oh, <darn. laughs> yeah. Appreciate so, it. So we'll squeeze in. Uh, <laughs> I won't be swimming. So. <laughs> so do we have a motion? Um, I, I will make a motion that we um, approve the um, variance for um, Philip and. Uh, Dina Batist um, for um, setback uh, and, and property. So, yeah. The variance request. Yep. I'll second it. Is there any discussion? The only thing I would suggest to you, Phil, and I think it's fine what you're doing. Um, the, the, what I see, and, and your key word is going to be hardship here. Um, you, you can't go further to the west because of county your, your septic system. You can't go, you know, further to the south because of kind of the road. You can't really, I can't say, use the word can't, but uh, if you went east, you know, then you're in the activity of your, your farming business in the driveway and your garage sits to the north. So really your, your hardship would be you're out of choices, you know, so that's really kind of the spot where yeah, you need to be. the well is in front of our house and they want it a certain distance away from the well. If we put it too close and we're going to be getting into the road mm -hmm. and the septic fields out to the west and we can't go north, uh, south because of county B and there's nothing that we can put north of our house so that was the only location that sure. we could put that could fit in there. So when you go to the county you know you might want to make sure that you know that they know of all the things that are around so you're just kind of that's your hardship so. The county will have the map so Yes. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Do they have that one that you just passed out? Is no, we just got this on Tuesday. Night. Actually, the county does have this because this was the permit. This was what was drawn to get the permit to put in the septic field, correct? Right. right. And so you got this from Jefferson County. Yes. Right. So Jefferson County has has this. Right. All right. We have a motion on the floor to grant a variance. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. And aye, and all opposed, the same sign. Hearing none, a variance request is passed. So, so our paperwork will go forward to the county, and then they will have their 
hearing, their variance hearing at their zoning meeting, and you'll be contacted with that date. Stay tuned with the county. All right, thank you, Philip. Thank you, sir. Thank you guys both for coming tonight. You know, we, we operate in a small vacuum here, but it's <laughs> nice to have a little participation. <laughs> You're welcome to stay. Like, it only gets you more can exciting stay. from here. <laughs> Thank you both so much for coming. Good luck with both of your events. We'll be over to swim. Before we move on from special or from uh, applications, I, I've got a couple of things to, to uh, let you guys know about. You remember when we were discussing the Ragnar permit last month, um, there was some discussion about where the rest stop is, is it actually is. It is at the high school. It is not at it's at St. Paul it Lake Mills High St. School. Paul's. Okay, it is at the high school. So um, the, it was just that the maps didn't get changed back. Oh, they only because did it, kind of their construction, they, they had only last did year, it one sure. year out here at St. Paul's. They are going back to high school. So, All right. Um, I confirmed that with Liz at Ragnar. She's concerned now that you're going to have concerns, and so just want to make sure that it's still okay. <laughs> We did, but we did but all of the it. previous events had been had been at the high school, at the high school. Right. so so the course is basically the same. It right. was only modified one year because of construction, right. right? Okay. Okay. And the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, um, uh, JJ Johnson contacted me about his annual rock and roll regatta mm -hmm. because he has some uh, he has a prior commitment. When uh, when this meeting's happening, when March's meeting is happening, and he can come to May's, but that's the month of the event. So he wanted to let me know that it's happening again. They've changed the date to be Memorial Day, which Matt, I'm not sure how the Lake Patrol is going to feel about a regatta on the lake on Memorial Day, but hmm. may have to beef beef up troll. I, I don't know. So he's he I was I wanted to tell you about it before May because there there is this issue with it being Memorial Day yeah, on the lake. Busy day. If you have a problem with it, we should tell him now rather than wait till he is here to see us in May. Um, I actually saw him at an event the other night and um, said that if he needed to have a representative that I would stand in for him because oh, I've okay. been I've been both involved with that regatta and and have actually approved it in the past. So, you know. And what's your feeling of the Memorial Day thing? Um, it is the Memorial Day Monday. It is the twenty. Let's see. <clears throat> it is not. It is not Monday. If, if I remember. Weekend. It's the weekend. Twenty third and twenty fourth. Right. Yeah. It is. It is not. It, it's Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. It is not Monday. It is not actually on Memorial Day. Right. Right. Um, I, I, do, I do not have a problem with it because um, with the sailboats and everything, um, the boaters, um, even when, we, when this event had been um, on very, very busy weekends, you know, um, sunny, warm, that type of thing, um, the boaters are very respectful. They have uh, chase boats um, to follow. Um, the racers and everything, and the course is really uh, a couple of buoys, um, very very far spread apart um, in the middle of the lake, um, and uh, I don't I don't believe that they have really had any problems. I don't I've never heard of anything, um, and so I don't I don't really think it's a big deal. And you know Memorial Day can be sort of a it sometimes sometimes cool. good, sometimes not so nice, and so I'm not sure if we're going to have large population out enjoying the water anyhow. Right. Those guys are kind of tough. They put on red suits <laughs> and, <laughs> and kind of go in anything. So why don't you uh, ask them to come to us next month rather than to wait till May? Mm -hmm. Can you do that? Um, sure, I, I could, as because I said, I says, represent, I, I, I talked with JJ and said that I would represent and then I would just abstain okay. from the vote. Um, and if and that's actually, it. it'll be okay, Jim, because after yeah. the annual meeting, then you become a non a private member, citizen. Right. Unless you are, have a major writing campaign, you'll be on the other side of the table anyway, so yeah. you'll be okay. 
Uh, hang on, you know something that I no, I don't. Mean I was just campaign or something. <laughs> you got to put in this what if, you know, the what if factor. <laughs> well, I would just as soon hear this and have a little preparation. I'm sure you would too, Matt. Yeah, yeah. Have a little time to uh, react to this. So ask him okay. if he wouldn't come before us in April, and we can work towards that goal. Super. It has not been a conflict. No. In the past, so. It's always been very quiet. And don't they also? They buoy their cars. Yes, they that's right. They don't their cars. No, 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 no. The, the water is completely open. They, you know, would prefer if other boats stayed out of the racing area because that affects the racing. Oh, sure. But, but the, the course is not cordoned off. It is buoys at two ends of, you know, windward and leeward mark, and, and then they sail in between. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much, you guys. All right, old business. Um, item number A, public hearing on the proposed amendments to Town Ordinance 2-5, the regulation of direct sellers. We have before us the... The cliff notes. Cliff notes. <laughs> cliff notes and the ordinance. Um, I would open the public hearing for any discussion that anyone would like to bring forward. Hearing none, do any of you board members have any questions or want to go over the cliff notes at all? The cliff notes can be found on the website and the notices. Basically updating our ordinance for direct published. sellers and, tr and transient Post merchants and it has been published. Um, just cleaning it up and changing the some of the language and then moving the permits and the permit fees all to the um, fee schedule. So hearing no comments, I would move on to the next item. Did you close it? Close. Yeah, you gotta close, gonna close it. the public hearing. All in favor, please say aye. Aye, aye. and all opposed, the same sign. Is there a motion? <laughs> no. Actually, I I think think not, no. you don't have to because looking okay. through the lights <laughs> becomes the chair's rule. <coughs> okay. Right? I think because that's the way I, I thought, see I it. I thought we still okay. I thought we still had to. No, that's the next one. We, the right. next one is. Oh yes, okay, job. right, okay. That's well, the next the, item is the discussion and the decision on the adoption of the amendments to Town Ordinance Two Five, the regulation of direct sellers. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, Town Ordinance uh, 2-5 regulations of direct sellers. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the decision to adopt amendments to Town Ordinance 2-5, the regulation of direct sellers, please say aye. 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 And all opposed, the same sign. The amendments are adopted to Town Ordinance 2-5, and thank you very much, Matt, for your help on this, and thank you, gentlemen, for cliff notes, work done, Sarah, same thing. We're clicking through our ordinances and getting them updated. Um, item number C is the update on increasing the 2015 highway construction budget. Okie dokie. <coughs> Uh, we as the town board have been working pretty diligently over the last six months to increase our highway budget and our construction budget for 2015. What we are proposing is that we would go forward and borrow money from an unnamed source and um, add about $100,000 to our, our highway budget for uh, highway construction. We had a special meeting at the end of February looking for some solutions to the London Road project that we have proposed over the last few years and um, I guess we would like to um, make sure that the public is in the loop. We are thinking about increasing our budget to the tune of $100,000 for these imminent repairs to London Road. Or so. Um, 
we have been doing a little research on where we might seek these funds and how we might apply these funds to the town's budget and to the tax levy that we um, add. Um, what we have determined basically is that we would like to go forward and look at the reconstruction of London Road um, and do as much of London Road as we can afford to possibly do, keeping in mind that special charge to the taxpayers of between $100,000 and $150,000. Um, we not to interrupt you, Hope. Go ahead. It's 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 not uh, reconstruction; it's repaving. Repaving. Otherwise, if we call it, um, you know, reconstruction, then we get over that. Uh, or as long as we're under two hundred fifty thousand dollars, it's okay. But we we have to be careful um, in that we don't become white sheet, because then it's going to take away from the number of feet we can do. So it's it's a repaving project. All right. So basically, this is on the agenda so that the public stands aware that this is something that we're going to be looking at. We'll be approving our town highway budget and its expenditures at our annual meeting in April. And so that is what we're looking at. I don't think there needs to be any decision at this point in time. No. Um, other than I wanted to report to you, um, Sarah, you've done a little work, um, and so have you, Sharon, and so have I, looking for sources um, to borrow this money and at what interest rate we might look at. Um, when I was at the district meeting, there was a presentation again from the state trust fund loans. State trust fund loans are available to the township for any possible public use that we would have. Uh, the interest rate on those uh, state trust fund loans is 2.5. Uh, some of the same figures that we've been looking at from commercial banks. One real big plus for the state trust fund loan, all of the monies that are earned in interest from the state trust fund loans do go back to the public schools of the state of Wisconsin. Last year they contributed $33 million and some thousand dollars in interest payments back to local libraries. And so that is a real plus. We have had a state trust fund loan in the past. Um, trust fund loans are very easy to apply for. We've had no problem um, getting those loans. Right. There is absolutely no um, charge for early repayment. And so that might be something that we are looking forward to um, looking at as a source for the revenue for is this the project. state trust fund is that interested in short term like that yes well, they yes, are yes wow their approval um, time frame is once applied usually within the first 45 days you are receiving your approval 10-year um, loans at 2.5 interest and the big plus is that all those monies go back to other concerns of the state mm -hmm. trust fund so in your loan, is that what you said? Yep. And we had one in the not so distant. Yeah, right. it's the TRID. Yeah. For our TRID grant, and there was absolutely no early prepayment mm -hmm. fine. Um, and so I think that is a real option for us to look at here as we go forward. Uh, I'll be looking forward to that in our uh, annual meeting agenda. Anybody else have anything to add? We just don't want the public to go forward and think that um, this is something that we are not thinking about. Um, also, as a side note, um, at the district meeting there was a nice slide presentation put forward about the transportation budget. Governor has basically ill-funded the state of Wisconsin and the towns of the state of Wisconsin for any kind of transportation funds. Um, our association was asking us to lobby heavily with our legislators about the state transportation fund and how it is funded through the gas tax. Um, our association is putting forward a great deal of effort to make sure that transportation funding and the recipe for that is looked at in the year 2015. Whether that happens or not is another story. Yeah, because doesn't the, the majority of our tax uh, from the fuels goes to land acquisition and bypass. 
construction, if well, I remember right. Transportation funding recipe is very confusing. Yeah. Great deal of money um, that is being expended in the next biennium is going to be spent in the county of Milwaukee, or as they called it at the state meeting, the state of Milwaukee. <laughs> So um, something to keep in your legislative eye. We are uh, underfunded mm -hmm. as far as road maintenance goes in the townships. Um, on to new business. Item A is a discussion of the agenda items for the annual town meeting of electors. Um, in front of me I have a list of terms that are expiring. Um, we have some terms that are expiring on the Planning Commission. I've extended an invitation to Steve Nass and John Schultz, whose terms are expiring, to continue serving. Um, that would be at their discretion. I will allow them to come forward and ask if they would like to um, re-up for another term. Um, of course, the town board member on the planning commission has been Jim Colgrove, and his term will be ending at the end of his term. There are also two openings on the Joint Rock Lake Committee. Wes Dawson's term is expiring in 2015, and so is Stan Spineski's. We talked about that a little earlier. <coughs> we also have, um, does not come up until July, but Dr. Roland Liebenau's term on the town library board. He is the appointee to the library board. His term will be ending in July. I think this is a misprint. Public Works Board um, has my name on it, but I believe our representative is John Reich, and John's term would end in 5 of 15. So I will be asking John to re-up his term. Dave, you are also appointed to the Fire Advisory Board, Lake Mills Fire Department Board, which is ending in 4 of 15. So you may want to think about that. Your term as the fire department representative on the Cambridge Fire Board <laughs> is undetermined, so you are stuck. <laughs> um, <coughs> anything else that you guys can think of? This library board one, you, um, I was told that the city was discussing who the town's representative was going to be as though they were going to appoint them, so... <coughs> uh, well, that would be something we would like to clarify with yeah. them. I will talk to Dr. Liebenau in the next few weeks and see how he feels about his continued service there. I would like to suggest that we have a meeting with the city manager um, in the next couple of months. Once our election is over, I would like to talk to them a little bit about um, our fire contract and the equitability of that. I guess I'd also like to talk to them about this library board appointment if that's an issue. Um, and there certainly are some other things that uh, we could cooperate on. We're going to have some uh, road construction yes. on Highway 89. I'd like to cover a few things. Sable Road and Mud Lake Road where they have paths. There are some discuss. shared road issues no. that we should talk about. I will try to set up a meeting with him as we enter our April. Mm -hmm. After we have our annual meeting, we'll work on that. Sure. Um, I don't know. Are there any other issues that you guys would like to put on the agenda of the annual meeting of the electors? Well, I guess one of them, you know, is, is obviously on the increase in the highway budget. And I guess, um, Sarah, I would like to, to ask you if um, the, the work that you had did with your personal taxes, yeah. if you could present that. And then also not to make you do a whole lot of extra work, um, cause, cause you used the hundred thousand dollar figure. Um, and I'd like to have you then take a look at the hundred hundred and fifty thousand dollar figure to, so that we can see what the difference of another $50,000 would be. Okay. And then hope what, didn't we talk about something else we wanted in the annual meeting last month? I don't think it was in the minutes. I thought there was a couple things we had talked about. Yeah, we had a couple. So what Dave was referring to, just for the buying public here, um, Sarah did some work with her own personal tax bill to demonstrate to us where our actual 
town tax collection money goes. She produced a pie chart for us that shows where our tax money is spent, how much goes to the school district, how much goes to the county, how much is retained here in the town. And then she took it a step further to show us what a special charge would be for this highway repaving project that we're talking about and what the dollar figure would be to the average taxpayer looking at a $100,000 increments. And so she would has been asked by Dave to put that forward at our annual meeting so that people will have an understanding of actually where their tax money goes and how the town is using it and how the rest of the world is using it too. Sarah, I remember what it is now with uh, when we had uh, Anita Martin. Yep, that's what I was just going to say. Yep. Yep. So I, I think we were looking to see what the electors' feedback was and the support of that um, Citizens for a Better Environment. Okay. All right, so there's an understanding there that we'll put those two items on the agenda. Can we talk about anything else we wanted to talk about? No. Those are the two that come to mind. Um, there has been sort of one outstanding for a while, which was, um, I think, brought at the last um, annual meeting, um, review of an audit. And I don't know that we have really closed on that. Um, you know, there had been some discussion about um, getting some facts and figures on that and um, also um, uh, what level, what we should be doing and that type of thing. I know some work was done um, mm -hmm. and everything, so that might be another good one that would uh, be put on just to get an update. Because right. we did meet yep. uh, with Sarah, but I think that kind of we ran aground a little bit with um, firms and stuff like that. And <clears throat> yep, we met. We decided what we were going to do. We were going to contact. Um, oh, why do I always blank when I'm thinking of their yeah town, the township over that way, um, it, who we thought had a list of people to contact. Um, and then thinking of Oakland. No, the other direction, not Helenville, that way. Farm, Farm, Farmington. 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 Um, yeah, so that was the original plan. Um, it didn't go any further, mostly because I ran out of time to gather information. It's really sitting in my court, and I just, I have a long list of things I'd like to do and a longer list of things that have to get done by a certain time, so I haven't mm -hmm. gotten any further on it. So those are item agenda items for the annual meeting, and certainly we will not be generating that annual meeting agenda until the end of the month. Mm -hmm. So if there is something that you guys <coughs> would like to bring forward or another citizen would like to bring forward for that annual meeting agenda, that is certainly open. And um, we will be having our annual meeting in April. We usually begin that at 7 and have that annual meeting prior to our origin, or to our board meeting. And so that date is April 14th, close to tax time. So please make a note of that, that the annual um, meeting of the electors of the town will begin at 7, and our regular April board meeting then again at 8. And if anybody has anything they want to bring forward, please pull that up. Um, item B, discussion of upcoming appointments. We pretty much covered that for April. Um, I am always open to any volunteers who would like to come forward. There may be some vacancies that um, people will not want to continue. So if there is any interest in that, we encourage you to um, apply and ask us to consider you for members on either our planning commission or any of the number of other boards that we have. Um, item C, something I'm really looking forward all to, right. the spring road tour. I think we've all kind of been looking at the roads, especially the last few days as things yeah. have started to bust up. It's you do, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's pick a date. <coughs> shortly after the election so that we can initiate our new board member. Yeah, I think it has to be after the election. Yes. 
So let's see, the election is what, April the 7th. 7th. And that board member won't be actually installed until the 14th, correct? Correct. Right. Yeah. So I uh, personally have been on that tour, not installed. <laughs> yeah, well, it's open to the public. It is. And, and Jim, you're yeah, It is an to, open uh, meeting. Yes, is there, yes, uh, yes, we'd have you along for the ride. In fact, who's going to drive if you don't? <laughs> so let's pick a date. Do you want to do it on a Saturday and get it all done at once, or do you want to break it up again? It's okay if it's not Saturday morning. Or do you think we ought to wait until um, uh, April 14th to make a decision with the new member? Because that's a, our meeting is going to be the 14th, yep. which is the 7th. So do you want to wait until and do that on the 14th so that they have input? Or are you just going to... No, I think it would be really good to have another team member. It's <laughs> yeah. a good way to, to uh, initiate. Break them in. Yeah, that's that's how every one of us got broken. Everybody in a car. And you, got a, you, go. you got a swore in on Tuesday and you're on road tour on Saturday. So, so that is um, what April. I like, what? I like the idea of the road tour on, on a Saturday and get it all done in, in once. One day. What we have in the past done it over a couple of days. Um, I know that when we have been looking at specific areas, even though you know the sun is up fairly late, we've run into some issues with kind of waning light and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so and again, in a hurry. I mean, I, my suggestion would be is um, April eighteenth. Uh, April eighteenth like, at like an eight o'clock in the morning or no. eight thirty. Uh, <laughs> you have called me a hell of a lot earlier than that in the morning, I know, so right. I know you're up and rolling. Okay, okay, eight thirty, nine o'clock. Well, no, I mean I, I, what I was saying is it just kind of gets in the way of my life, but I mean it's okay. You decide. <laughs> yeah, April eighteenth right. at eight a.m. It is. Okay. Should I, Tentative uh, date for our road tour, Saturday, April 18th at 8 a.m. That's a posted meeting. Should I contact the candidates for the supervisor position? Yes, you should. Sort of it's kind of funny they're not here. I don't know how they think they're going to run the town of Lake Mills if they're not here. Okay, one day at a time. I'm with Jim. That's the whole election. Thing. This is a reporting year. Um, Twenty odd, year. odd number of years are our pacer years, and so this is an important tour. I think we kind of have a handle on the other details from before, so mm -hmm. let's put that on the calendar. Jim, you are more than welcome to come and bring Friedrich if you need to. <laughs> <laughs> He's out of here. <laughs> <laughs> No, as long as I can, as long as I can bring my GoPro and you know put it up there and just mash the gas and <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> All right, another road year. Uh, item D: discussion of sale of the town land on Conservation Road. We've been kicking this around for a couple of months. Um, really is not our prerogative as a board to sell that land. It is a taxpayer decision and one that we should have considered at the annual meeting. Um, but I think we should do a little groundwork ahead of time. We have a parcel um, on Conservation Road that has a um, paved road to it. At one time, it was a collection site for recycling and garbage. Um, it is about three and a half acres. I have not talked with county zoning to see exactly how it is zoned. My gut feeling is that it probably is not zoned at all. Um, I guess I'll do the legwork to see what it might be zoned at and what kind of details we might need to go forward with. But I thought we should put this on the agenda this month so that people mm -hmm. knew that we were thinking about selling that property. So we should be able to go on to Jefferson County's GIS mm -hmm. website um, and we should be able to call up exactly what that is so we can get all of the details like on, that, that right on that parcel. Yeah, can you do that, Sarah, while we're talking sure. about it? Um, 
the town has not used that site for probably the last 25 years. It is adjacent to some other residential property. And um, we have been kicking around the idea that there's really no reason for us to own that property. Right. So that is the impetus there. I want the taxpayers of the town of Lake Mills to understand what we're thinking about. If we were to post that for sale and we would have an offer to purchase, that would be a special town meeting which would empower the town to sell that land and at what price. Do we have an address there? Uh, I don't know if there's a fire number or not. It does. For sure. It does. Just pull up a map. Look at the map. <clears throat> Because actually, if it's not, we could even maybe get that zone A3 and it would be a, a beautiful building lot on a dead end road. Yep. Mm. You know? Yep. Let's see what we can pull up here. Takes a minute to pull it up. <clears throat> the site is a little slow. Yep. But it is so nice having the internet here. Once it gets up and running, though, it's, it's yes. really nice. This part just takes a little while. Mm -hmm. And this year, too, um, they added, uh, you can actually pull up your tax bill. You, used to, you could always see how much it was, but this year you can actually pull up a copy of it. It's nice. All right. You yep. have to so guide you can me here a little bit. You can see. This is Conservation and mm -hmm. it just down See the a little, little bit. weird triangle or the weird um, parallelogram yep, down a little bit. Right that's that's, it. that's yep. it. Okay. And if you scroll down, it should um, tell you what it is. Three and a half acres. Yeah, three and a half acres. But I thought that. It said what it was zoned. Uh, zoom in a little bit. Um, I uh, just on the area. You should. We should be able to. Yeah. Uh, I guess it doesn't. Oh, um, look, look, look over to the left. County zoning. Um, yeah. There we go. A one. A one. So that's the parcel we're talking about. It is served by that easement there that you see. It's a which how wide is it? Is that sixty six point seven or is that something else? Looks like seventy eight to me. Yeah, because if it is, it's okay. But if it's less than sixty six, we have an issue. What are you looking? It looks like seventy eight, just to the right of the yeah, arrow. Right. So the easement just above just a little, a little, little bit. Yeah, that easement. Seventy eight point seven. Yep. Looks. Yep, so that would be yeah, that would right be there. the driveway. That okay. would be the access. Yeah. Yep. But that is, uh, I hope that's a permanent easement. I'm assuming. Uh, if it's on GIS, it is. Yep. And there's some trees there. So. Owner R. What's that mean? Owner one and owner two. Am I owner? Oops. Middle yeah. initial of the owner. That's what that is. Hmm. Why is it listed that way? <laughs> I don't know. Is uh, because the easement is on his property, mm -hmm. right? Well, got to do a little exploration yeah. here. Yep. If you zone like that to A three, that would be uh, increase its value. I don't know how that all works, how the town changes the zoning on something. <laughs> the same channels as everyone else. Then the town so, board. Exactly. The county. So is, you know the drill. <laughs> um, so is this something that we should put onto the Yeah, I think it should go on the planning commission agenda. I think it's part of the planning for the town of Lake Mills and how we would do you think Best we, use our I think assets. What Jim is asking if we should put it on the annual meeting. Annual meeting for this year. Okay. Sure. You have to pursue it. Um, I'm thinking that. Sure. Well, at least that way we have input from the electors on how yeah. they feel about selling it. Correct. Between now and then, I will go to the county and talk to them about sure. 
what the opportunities are and how that easement is actually recorded. But I want everyone in the audience to know that this is something that we're thinking about. Seems to be no reason to really hang on to that three acre site on Conservation Road. No. All right, no action intended. And I think, I guess in my mind, what we do is then we take that money and it would open up a CD and or any place that maybe earns a little bit of money and then that money then would be earmarked for an upgrade in a town hall or a disaster or something like that. Yes, that would be that would be prudent, very appropriate. Yeah. Prudent. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Just so you ladies and gentlemen know where we're going here. <laughs> <laughs> Item E: Board expense approval. Didn't bring mine. Real good, hope. Okay, this is something from Sharon. <laughs> what? Nothing. We're just telling jokes over here. Okie doke. I guess before we close, I thought me. Sure. Um, Sarah's, Sarah has provided us with a highway update, a budget on our, our highway budget. I just want you guys to take a look at this and know where we're going and where we're coming from. Correspondence? Yeah, now we'll move on to correspondence, item number 11. Okay, I got a letter from a concerned citizen I happen to know is a teenager. And so I thought that was, um, um, I don't know, I was proud of her for okay. Why don't you read voicing it to her us? opinion. It's kind of long. That's the gist right. of it is that they live on the edge of town. They moved in um, within the last year from Ohio um, over by Moe's, that edge of town. Um, and they're, they're very active outdoors, so they're using the road to bike and walk and, and you know, do activities, and it, it's dangerous over there in that area. The sidewalk ends east of there, and um, you, know, you see people out there running, biking, whatever, all the time. Her suggestion is putting in a sidewalk. Um, I don't know how you feel about that or how, what the constraints of that would be, but it did get me thinking about maybe at least a pedestrian sign in that area would be prudent. And you can think about that when you're on your road tour. But I mean, I per personally bike with my kids, run through there. It, it is hazardous, especially with the condition of the road. There's so many bumps that you sometimes have to move over into further into traffic or you're going to get tossed off your bicycle. But Sarah, what that's a county highway. Yeah. I know it's a county highway, but. And we did have some discussion, and I guess I would bring this forward at this point in time. The area that you're talking about is between Pine Street in Lake Mills, County Highway B extends to the intersection, inter, the intersection of County Highway V and beyond. This is a county highway from, from Pine Street North. Mm -hmm. And um, when we had Brian here for our special meeting, we talked to him a little bit about the condition of that road and why the county has decided not to proceed with any reconstruction or any repaving of that particular two block section of the road. And the discussion then led to the fact that many of the properties that are surrounding there are either in the township or on the fringe of the township and close to the city of Lake Mills. Um, I think gathering what Brian said is they're not really willing to spend a lot of money on that section of road thinking that that section of road will soon become part of the city of Lake Mills or if they were to refurbish that road that they would be doing it in conjunction with the city of Lake Mills. Mm -hmm. I was a little surprised by that because I don't see that domino effect happening there. But that road is a county highway. It extends many miles past that. And um, I think if that squeaky wheel is going to get any grease, it's going to have to be done by the citizenry of the town of Lake Mills and the city of Lake Mills. So uh, I'm sorry that you didn't read all of her comments, but um, that is I not a 
town road. Um, but I guess I would redirect those comments or anyone who has troubles with that road, and I know there are many people who have troubles with that section of the road, that we begin to advocate with the county to redo that section of the road, right. regardless of who owns it into the future. Yeah. So one of the things that, um, that might be done, there, there was a lot of discussion on what to do with Highway 89 going through the city um, the north end of that was done a few years ago, and the south and so from Lake Street or the middle of, of the city um, down to um, the boundary with the town um, is an area in question and needs to be rebuilt and, and that type of thing. Um, during that, there was discussion about um, how do you set up parking on that? What, what is the width of the road? Uh, there was uh, talk about taking out a whole lot of trees along that section and everything. And I think they reached kind of a, an interesting um, interchange, but um, basically there's gonna be parking on one side as I understand it. But one of the things that came out of that was that there is a, um, a lane marker called a share row and what this is is a chevron that is placed on the road that alerts um, cars to the fact that there are going to be um, other vehicles, bicycles predominantly, um, but there, there could be other uh, runners and, and that type of thing in this specific area. And the whole idea is that this is a shared area. Um, it is not purely for cars. And so um, I, would, I would suggest that um, this young activist, I think this is great, yeah, um, if, if, if she were to put that um, towards uh, both Jefferson County um, and, um, and the city, the city. Um, uh, that that might be something that could be done to um, help create a uh, more effective corridor for doing the types of things that she wants to do. You know, it, it, it doesn't widen the road, but it does make everyone aware that this is an area where multiple different types of uses could take place. Mm -hmm. That does, and, and I agree. Uh, the only thing is, is if one was to put a sidewalk on there, in there, that would be in the town of Lake Mills. You know, if it was on, I don't know, either side of the street but then again then you probably have to assess their taxes to get something like that done too mm -hmm. yes. but otherwise that's really good somebody she even young went so far as to find sources of how much it would cost per square foot to put in a sidewalk wow and wow. the manual labor cost yeah. good for her good for her yes excellent yes. So and what was did, it? She did CC the city of Lake Mills as well. Okay. okay. Um, it's uh, from sources. It seems that one square foot is around four to twenty-five to five twenty-five dollars, and manual labor would be around ten to fifty dollars an hour. Hmm. <clears throat> I would remind you again that this is a county <laughs> highway. I know. So you don't want to respond? I'll, I'll respond. Um, I think that would be really nice that that. Um, these comments on that particular section of the road begin to be redirected to the county highway department so that they begin to see that this is a very critical area for yes. all of us, regardless of who owns it and who is serviced by it. She should write a letter to the, in the leader. So that oh, yeah. yeah. More there you go. And actually, I think it actually starts back a little bit further. It starts back by the, the park there. Where you go up around the curve, yeah. and it gets kind of, it's tight. Sure. Um, I never want to find myself in a situation where the town of Lake Mills is asking to have sidewalks installed. I know. Because we are a rural township. Mm -hmm. This has never been part of our character, although I understand the shared usage of that road. I would love to see more people advocate to the county highway department for reconstruction of that part of the highway. And the next time we have a meeting with Brian, we'll definitely be bringing it up. Yeah, so if you would um, save a copy of that for me, Sarah, and um, perhaps I'll write a letter and include that in it, all right? Sure. I got a little more here. All right, go ahead. The town of Kashkanag uh, is interested in running the 
Wisconsin Towns Association press release regarding the proposal to eliminate local assessments in Jefferson County Daily Union. They've listed a cost. They're asking if anyone would like to join in and participate in running this. Just so you know. A um, couple of UW Extension Local Government Center education uh, opportunities. One is advanced parliamentary procedure for local, Wisconsin's local governments. Now that we have our cheat sheet from Jim, we're all set. Isn't maybe, that great? It, it is. is very, I, I've got it. In, it's on, in my folder. It will be here I, it, every, every meeting. And then also local government essentials, spring 2015. So there's those to peruse. Uh, we are cordially invited to attend the like School now. District of Cambridge Community Information Meeting on the Severson Learning Center. Have you heard about this thing? There's a picture and a uh, formal um, invitation. They are putting out uh, putting on an um, outdoor learning facility. Oh, yeah, it is. So you can't go to it, but you can see what the center looks like. Thank you, Sharon. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Government Officials Professional Development 2015, some more education opportunities. This one's in July in Green Bay. Regional Master Civic Academy Board, uh, for Civic and Public Affairs. Education is one of the areas that is that's the Westline. West Line. Yeah. If you go on the West Line, you can, um, you can find out when they're offering it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. It. I have just one FYI. Um, Wapon Implement had um, their 10% parts thing for the month of March. So most of the, the pre-maintenance on the, the mowing tractor, we can just we can pretty much do locally. It's just some upgrading of some hoses that are pinched, and so we don't have any trouble where we get out on the, the road. But I had ordered a uh, a new roller for the bottom, oh, sure. and the bearings mm -hmm. and the hangers, so that um, for the for the flail, right, right, yeah, for the um, more portion, right. So uh, it, and obviously, as we got the the qualifies for the ten percent uh, off on the, but I. I just dropped the parts order off, and he was going to be um, um, ordering it. I do not know what the price is, but just so I let you know that there, it's There's done. Be some tractor maintenance coming it, along. Yep. So we're starting to tune that up and get All ready right. to go. Super. So. Do I need to contact um, Dave Hine, or is he just going to continue on? I, the way, yeah, the way he kind of left it, that he was very interested in and he was happy with it, and and I'll definitely give him a call to to make sure that he's on board and and uh, that sort of thing. I'd like How to about, invite him out to help do the oil change and okay. that sort of thing. So. How about Mr. Turpin? I think I had to make a phone call. Or was it him that I had to call last I week? actually sent him a note, thanked him for his service when we were paying him the last time okay. and asked him if there was any changes you know, that okay. were coming forward. But I guess a phone <laughs> call wouldn't hurt. Okay. You think the grass is going to grow again, okay? Mm -hmm. I guess all right. Guaranteed. Okay. So any of those contacts that we need to make, I think, would be prudent Same with at this docs. time. Now we'll have to start think, looking at. Well, and I, I and talked to. Um, I sent the same note to Jerry. I haven't heard a thing back from him, so I guess I'll put that on my calendar. If you'll contact Ernie, I will get a hold of Jerry. Okay. See where we're at. I think there were some repairs that might have needed to be done to that um, Ferry Park launch. And then we'll deal with the porta potty as May rolls around. Um, item number 12, meeting scheduled. Planning Commission, have you guys decided when you would meet other we, than the election day? We did, and I it's forgot April. to, yes, I forgot to pass it on to Sarah. It is April 8th. I found it in the minutes. Yeah, yeah I'm so that's, sorry, um, I forgot no, that's to fine. mention it. April 8th is a Wednesday then. That is correct. We are not going to meet on election day. All right. And then the next meeting, uh, uh, April 7th, Joint Rock Lake Committee will go on as scheduled, and we have a large agenda that night with um, many guests. And then April 14th is our annual meeting, um, which begins at 7 with the regular meeting to follow. I would make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll second it. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Meeting is adjourned.